Welcome to the Nonprofit Exchange Podcast. Stories by leaders for leaders to help you raise the bar on your own excellence to release the potential inside of you. Now, here's today's podcast. We hey, are. welcome everybody. This is Hugh Ballou, Russell Dennis for this version of the Nonprofit Exchange. I'm going to be invisible because I'm taking a flight today and Russ is really the brains behind this operation anyway. He's, uh, he's been steady helping us out. So we ask our guests to introduce themselves and tell a little bit of background of you know, how they got to where they are. And our guest today um, has been a longtime friend of both Russ and Hugh. And, and uh, Daniel has lots of really good things up his sleeve and we've just begin to, begun to discover what they are. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, uh, ask Ruth to introduce himself and then Russ will, will, will he's developed some really good questions for you. And Ruth, thank you so much for being in, in this uh, nonprofit exchange today. Tell folks about yourself, please. I'm excited. Well, well, first of all, we go far, so far back and we know each other so well. You, know, you actually know my real name because you said Daniel, he said Ruth. Rook is my last name. Daniel's my first name. And as a guy who loves branding, there's a lot of Daniels out there, but there's not, there's no Rook. So I, I, I attach myself and identity to my last name. <laughs> that's funny. So if you're confused, that's why, because he knows me a little bit more than most people. Well, uh, um, I'm an artist privately trained since the third grade. I had a gift. I had really cool parents who supported that gift. And they said, this guy, this kid has something. And so they put money out there and invested in me to hone those skills. I graduated as an illustrator from the top illustration school in the United States at that time, Ringling School of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida. And I jumped right out and created my own business. And, you know, my passion really is I love to wow people. Um, and, and, I, and I loved creating imagery that evokes emotions that gain reactions in a storytelling setting. And so that's what I do today. I do that for my full service agency, Blink. Um, and I actually teach and show up people under my, my, my I love my fun brand. It's world dominating brand because uh, I think it's very important that we can design our own world. We have the power to do that and, and define what that world is and dominate it in a great positive way. And so uh, that's a little bit about me. Been married about 22 years, got four beautiful children and I love to play. So I'm very, very, uh, I feel I'm very successful because I play, you know, and I, and I get to do my dreams for a living. And I love helping others, especially those who want to have huge impact in, a, in the nonprofit world. There's a mission behind everybody. There's a story behind everybody's effort. There's a heart and desire that, that's burning in their bones and that fire they want to get out there in the world. And so showing up here today to give some of the tools that we use from a marketing advertising perspective and from a world dominating perspective, I'm excited to share that with you to empower you and your audience to just be awesome and affect the world in, a, in an amazing way. Yeah, Daniel, it's great to see you. And really it is about a dream. And when people step into a space where they want to make a positive difference in the lives of other people, sky's the limit. We are facing some huge problems out in society today. And it takes big thinkers, big dreamers, uh, a lot of times in the grind of serving people, which so many nonprofits do every day, they often lose sight of that dream. And, and that's a terrible thing to have happen. But one of the problems that I've seen is I see people doing phenomenal work out here, but nobody knows about it. Uh, what, what, what do you think would be at the root of that? So it, it's, there's, there's a mentality of scarcity. There's a mentality of not worthiness. Um, there's a mentality of insignificance, you know, um, start, you know, I, when I'm, when I'm dealing with a leader who, who's having that trouble, uh, the, the, the trouble is really in their head. It, it's what they feel internally, you know, and I like to bring them back to the passion of why they're doing what they're doing. Um, they, they started this mission. Uh, for a reason. They wanted to change something for a reason. They saw a problem and a solution. And it wasn't just from a business minded, and especially we do with a lot of nonprofits, it's not necessarily from a business opportunity. It's more from a heart space where they really, really want to be effective to solve a solution. 
And so when you start doing that, there's a lot of self doubt that comes into play where like the, the you know, what you're trying to cure and, and solve is so big. How can you do it? Right. And that leads to that mentality. Um, and then of course, trying to get people to rally behind you to support you in doing that. And while a lot of people have, um, will support your endeavor from a, I like that, that's a great idea, and we encourage you, you have to jump from that, that like and love perspective, those fans, and create them actually as brand partners or donors or supporters, what, you know, whatever your industry, really whatever your nonprofit's made up of. And, 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 and that's, that's the hard part, right? And, and I'll tell you, you know, some of it's because since you're doing this out of the goodness of your heart, sometimes it's, it's hard to ask for the money. Right. Because there's a guilt. And also, you don't you don't want to be needy. You know, you don't you don't want to beg. And so what I what I do is and I think I hope that answer is kind of why mentally some people are there. Mm -hmm. So what I love to do is I really love to focus really on their brand, their branding and their brand culture, especially internally, because behind the scenes, they are an understanding behind the scenes. They see the mountain here. Right. And, you, and, and, and that's all they see. And they think that you see that mountain with them. And, and you don't, right? That's the mountain they created that they're, they're trying to solve. While you're looking at them and you're watching them take those steps up. And you, when I say you, that's the outside world. And so articulating those steps is very vital in building that connection. And, and I, what I say, succeeding and growing up in front of your audience. But we don't always see the great things we're doing. We only see what's ahead of us. We're always problem solving. We're empathizing with our, our cause. And sometimes we're getting mentally caught up in the cause and, and become so empathetic that we're sympathetic and we have this similar mentality we, that, that infects us, which is not necessarily good, right? So you always have to be that knight in shiny armor. And while you feel like your steps are, might be insignificant, they're not. And when you really look at what you're trying to reach, that jump, that leap, that bridge to get where you want to go is always big and you don't know always know how. And that's where that insignificant comes into plays and, and adequacy starts coming into play. And so what I love to do, and, and, I, and I, I, I honestly think that this is a good way to do this, is start a journal. Ooh. Create a journal and, 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 and write down what your hopes and desires are for your, for your, 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 your cause, your, the, the, the recipients of your cause. And then write down some of the, the case, kind of like building a case study of wins, you know, and write down what you tried to achieve and then what happened, what you tried to achieve. And out of that, you're going to identify little stories of success. And really and what's going to help you do is if you write that and you review it like every week or every month or every quarter, you're going to sit there and go, wow, we made a big difference in Sally's life, but we were so close. We didn't see it. That journal will help you do that. Wow. We helped this family really get to the next level. And now those are big ones sometimes, but you really don't see where they, you know, the, the small steps. And so what you'd start doing is look and reflect on those steps. Look at those wins because it takes a lot of little wins. We're always waiting for the big win. Once we get here, then we'll show up with our marketing now. Then we'll show up on social media. Then we'll start doing announcements. Then we'll start doing a newsletter when we have these big bragging rights. And we put that goal so high. It's right here. I'm above the camera. You're not going to reach it. And no one's going to hear it. So you've got to talk about the small steps and tell the little stories along the way. And of course, in today's world, with social media and everything that we have, there's no reason why you can't do it. There's nothing stopping you from doing it except yourself. Well, I can Mark, preach, baby. <laughs> Welcome Mark to the said, church of Rook. <laughs> the mindset is where it's at. And so as it is. So, so the organization goes and what we teach at Cinevision is to start from the beginning and build that system. And it starts with that dream. You have that dream. And you reverse engineer everything, essentially. Yeah. But it's, it's finding out, bringing the right people on the bus, as Jim Collins says, from good to great. And you don't have to do everything. A leader gets into that trap where she or he feels like they have to do everything. Here's the thing that complicates uh, getting the message out there because you want to get, attract board members, you want to attract volunteers, you want to have donors, you want people that actually use your services. So there are so many different people that you have to talk to. And the challenge I see folks having is getting the right people on the bus. There's a different message for each type of person. So trying to reach these people is something that a lot of these leaders uh, could use some assistance with. 
And it is about people, it's about stories, uh, and, and people give to people. This yeah. is very important. So in order for that nonprofit to be effective, they need to reach all of those multiple audiences with the message that resonates with each audience. Yeah. So talk about, you've been successful. You've done lots of different types of enterprises. Now let's look at, you know, you can look at different types of nonprofits, but uh, I happen to be on the board of trustees for the church that I attend. Mm -hmm. And while you have certain activities that are church related, my church does work with homeless programs, uh, with food banks and a few other uh, uh, agencies in the area. So when it comes to messaging and, and reaching out to these multiple audiences, how would you do it in a scenario with an organization such as a church that works with multiple nonprofits? So you're, you're going to get me to preach here. So let me get up on my pedestal. All right. The, the, the challenge with the church specifically, it's, it's, it's the balance. You're not really a church. You're not really a, balance, a business, right? Because churches sometimes become too much of a church and they become too much of a business and, and they're just neither, right? So it's really difficult to walk the fine line. And when you're talking about rallying people behind you, um, you know, a lot of it is we have to be able to say no. A lot of the way, a lot of times we stumble is because we're just taking all the yeses in and, and you've got to be able to say no. Now, the opposite, uh, opposite coin of that, and this is where the business and the church comes in place, is, is where we put so much criteria in front of them to vet them that we actually squash the fire in their bones. You know, and, and that's where a lot of, uh, of nonprofits actually fail because as you bring people on, you're building that brand culture, right? And you need to understand what that brand culture, what that brand culture stands for. And it's not you, you started it. It's your vision, but it's not your organization, right? It's the donors, it's the receivers organization. So once you build a brand culture, understanding how you are there to serve and to contribute, now you're always talking about that. So it never becomes a you and me. So you're always able to say, hey, here's our brand. This is what we stand for. How do you fit, fit into it? And now all you have to judge is the commitment, right? And, when, and then here's the hard part. When they want to do something on their own, oh, we get all scared, right? Like, because it's your baby, but it's not your organization. You started it. You're the visionary, right? But it's the brand that matters. And so what you actually ha get to have a conversation with that person that has all that fire in their bones, they want to do stuff, you want to judge, okay, are you committed? That's a proper way to vet them, right? How much time, what can you do, how much money, what kind of effort, great, to make sure that they're going to be there. So they're going to finish what they start. But generally, it's us, as the leaders of those organizations, that's actually get in the way, that don't allow them to finish. So what your conversation is, okay, how does that fit within the brand? Here, here's our, here, and, and, and that can be a little bit of missions, that can be uh, you know, so what your, your goals are, but how does that fit within the brand? And as long as it's doing that, you can give them the freedom to go out there, trusting your brand is being represented properly. So and getting clear on that is important. And it is about the brand. You know, the first step to building a high performance nonprofit is to have a solid foundation. This yeah. is where that branding piece comes in because we look at the core values that drive. What's the leadership team think? Who are the people that you serve? Who needs you? Because it's not about you. And the greater mission is, is where that focus is. And so you have to determine, okay, what are we about? Who do we serve? What's the problem we solve? And why do we do it in a way that nobody else can? And that's yeah. what it becomes about. That becomes the engine. And when you mention uh, leaders, I see leaders that have a tough time. Uh, and you know, the ones that have the biggest struggle are the ones that start it, especially after it starts to take off. And uh, there's a really good book called The Founder's Dilemma, and I'll have to get the author of that. But you know, this is, uh, this is something that happens not just in business. And you know, to a lot of people, branding is a business term. That's not necessarily what branding is. What branding it, it isn't peculiar to business. It's really who, who you are and what you're about. And, and uh, why do so many people miss the boat on branding? Why do you think that's so misunderstood? <laughs> well, it's right up there with the word marketing. 
<laughs> you know, um, well, well, because I, so, okay. So the definition of branding is the activity of marketing. So it's confusing because you have a brand and, and, and most people think that's a logo and it kind of, that's a piece of it. We're building a brand, right? And then that's kind of a company. It, that's a piece of it, but it's really, in my opinion, it really isn't. The brand is, is really, is, is again, the exercise of marketing, how you show up. It's an experience. And, and so when you nail down what your internal branding is, what your brand culture is, it's a set of, of missions, experiences that you're trying to achieve that you stand for. The external branding is the activity of marketing. And once you understand that, I'm going to answer your question, but once you understand that, that conversation shifts towards always that. And then you as the, as the founder can release a lot of that control because it's now about the brand, not about me and my ideas. And the people who have the most trouble are the smartest people are the most caring people because they care so much, but you got to understand the, the identify really what that brand is, what it stands for and what that experience really is doing. And then you can focus on that. And it takes you out of the equation, quite frankly, but people get confused on branding because it's this ethereal thing. It's an emotion. And, and a lot of that emotion is, is memories and promises of what that experience is. And since it's ethereal, it's hard to pinpoint. So there's steps to identify the brand. Just like you said, what do we stand for? What are our goals? You know, what's the logo? What's the, you know, what are our, what are our colors? You know, how's that, you know, uh, uh, spread to the world and communicate to the world? And, and how do we look at internally? And so in brand words, what do we stand for? And, and so like I have an exercise that helps you discover what your brand words are. And it really takes all this big concept down to really three little words of, and, and I'll tell you mine right now. Creative, empowering, and entertaining. Every company I own, every company I start has to fit in those three things. If not, it's going to be out of sequence of me. So creative, I hope you see I'm creative. Mm -hmm. Empowering, I'm giving you a lesson right now, help you there. Entertaining, I hope I'm making you laugh, right? So everything I do fits in that. And so it takes our brand and, and really the essence of the brand and really simplifies it. And sometimes that's the best help that they can get is what are those three words and then you can always go, how does that communication fit with a creative, empowering, and entertaining, right? It can fit maybe two, right? But not one, you know, like for in your, your CFO, don't want creative. <laughs> you don't need to have every bit of it. But if you're really doing your communications, you always can look at it and say, okay, great. That's a great idea. How does it fit with the creative, empowering, entertaining? And if it doesn't fit, speak to all three, it's not a good fit. So get rid of it. Right. Or if it's a communication, if you're going to show up on Facebook, right. Does it fit? Or can we show up in a creative way, empowering way, an entertaining way? And you guys are great at that. And so if you can, then great. That's a great initiative. So if you remember those three words and you really hone those three words in and own them, you can always point to that and challenge and really judge everything you're doing from what you wear, what you say, what medium you use, what kind of newsletters you put out there, what kind of Facebook lives you put out there. It really helps you stay on track. And people can take the ethereal thing and judge themselves to see what their active and efforts are doing. And that because we rely on them, uh, rely so heavily upon them. That's very great. You know, it's all about who we are. And so boiling it down to, and in the book, uh, why should I choose you? They say, boil it down to seven words that drives why you do your business. Doesn't necessarily show up on the slogan. But the, the idea that you're, you're talking about is just the same. They have to, it, there's this definition of why you do what you do and it directs everything you do. And some people are really good. They get this part down this, oh great, now we know what it's about. Now, uh, who are some of the people we wanna reach? How do we find out who we wanna reach? Well, God, I gotta recruit some board, more board members. I gotta find some volunteers. How do I find out where they are and how do I get to them? Then what do I say when I get there? Yeah. Well, that, that comes down to choosing the right people. You know, I like to look at board members. And the reason why you bring board members on is because either they're given money or, or they a, are a point of a credibility that will allow you to get money especially for nonprofits, right? That's why they're there. If, if they just want to give and they're not going to do that, right? It's more of their volunteers. And, and again, what I love to do is talk about the mission and talk about the brand. This is what we stand for. 
This is this, these are this is how we're applying ourselves into the world. And of course, this is what our goal is. This is what the cause is behind it. And, and you've got to see if they resonate with that and have the same passion. They can't just like it. They have to have the same passion. And then what level of commitment are they willing to give? And by the way, you might have a lot of people who want to commit a lot, but they really aren't in sync with that. You've got to say no or the right, vice versa, you know. Um, how to communicate that is if you're starting – and here's the truth. So if you take – go back to the first part of our conversations, those little stories of success, and you start talking about them, right? So first of all, you, you're the leader, whoever's the voice is, the communicator, the marketing director, the founder, whoever that is, once you understand, you, you connect back to why you're doing what you're doing and focus in on those brand words and to get really centered and then look at those little successes. Forget about the big monster, right? It's, it, it's a cloud that hangs over you. Forget about that. Just the little successes right now. And you start sharing those successes with your world you're going to attract the right people, especially if you show up within your three brand words, right? If you show up in an entertaining way, my, my perspective, right? Because it's my words. If you show up in an entertaining way, if you show up in an empowering way, if you show up in a creative way, you're going to attract people that are attracted to that. And if you articulate what you're trying to do, they will naturally walk, aside, uh, walk, upon, walk, walk beside you. But they also want to see success. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, and the reason why those little stories are, are, and I'm going to tell you how to apply some of those so that we, you know, help with the marketing part, because I know that's one of the things we want to talk about. But when you start articulating those little stories of success, they see their investment of time, money, and energy grow. It, they want, they're seeing tangibility to the efforts that they're doing. And that's so important. And those little stories of success can show up with Facebook Lives. Like, hey, we're here helping the kids today. You know, thank you donors because, you know, you've, you've been able to put backpacks. We're going back to school, right? We were able to get 50 backpacks to this, this grade school. Is that amazing? You guys did it. Thank you. That's a huge success. People feel good about that. It could be a newsletter, right? It could be your Facebook pictures and posts. And I focus a lot about on Facebook. And, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of tactics here as we get into this. But I focus on that because it's the easiest, most successful media that we have. Obviously, it's the, it's a, the most visited media uh, and website out there. And, you know, so you might as well. Almost everybody's on there. I also would say there's other platforms, right? But make sure your audience is there. You want to be able to reach the people you want to reach. So there's definitely other platforms like Snapchat and Instagram. Depends who your supporters really are. And quite frankly, you might have a platform where you speak to your supporters, right? So some of us are, are older. So that's Facebook. But your, your, your recipients of your support might be on Snapchat. So you might want to separate, you know, the way you communicate. Here's showing how we support. Here's our actual support. You know, but that might be a deeper dive. Well, <laughs> but yeah. The cool, yeah. You know, success leaves some clues. And the, the important thing is really to be where the people that you want to reach are at. And uh, having a leadership that's committed to doing that is really important. And, Everybody you talk to may fall into a different category. You, you want three things from people. Uh, all three would be lovely, time, talent, and treasure. If you can get them all, beautiful. But yeah. uh, everybody can serve in some capacity, and what's important to some may not be important to others. There is that extra level of commitment that you need out of your board members. They really have to be <laughs> committed. But once you figure out what it is that you stand for and what's what that thing is that drives everything you do. It boils down to making sure everybody's singing off the same seat of music, you know? Yeah. The, the guy that's sweeping the floor should be able to tell you the mission uh, with as much uh, skill as your executive director as far as, uh, because everybody's enthusiastic about it. Everybody has a way to serve in a way that matches their desires. So it's matching all of those desires. And when it comes to tactics, it's really about getting into these different places. And stories matter. You know, you've got the CFO type that you mentioned before. They're all about the numbers. And, and uh, but when you translate the dollars you raise to the number of backpacks you purchased and the number of kids that are the number of laptops that the school's going to have that the children have access to you're you're not only showing the impact with the dollars you're impacting lives and so that's yeah. the 
that's the double bottom line that now yeah. and you're providing value out there. Uh, it's important to talk about the difference you make and that you're providing value. You don't need to show up with a hat in hand. You are there to partner with people to make a real difference in your community. And there are a lot of tools out there to do that and ways to talk about doing that. That's your wheelhouse is painting a picture for people so that they understand how what they do matters. Yeah. And every time we contact people, we don't have to ask for something. We can tell them how what they've already done has made so much difference. And well, you know, hey, you can do more. The more that you do, the more people that we help. So it's really getting in there and, and not being afraid to, to look at things like marketing because we have to create su uh, success systems as leaders. We have yeah. to give people tools to talk with, uh, tools to go out and reach out to other people with and make it personal because everything, whether your, your tax status is profit making or nonprofit, it's all about relationships. People, yeah. people work with others that they know, like, and trust. And that's what I, I agree. Yeah. L let me show you some tactics how to do that. Is that cool? That's outstanding. I would like right. to see uh, ready to learn some cool stuff. I'm gonna give you some value. All First right. of all, I do want to I do want to say this that if I go through this, you can ask me questions. Uh, um, I would tell you go to World Dominators Unite, World Dominators Unite dot com. Uh, that's our Facebook group. You know, uh, we can let you in, and then I can ask some questions. So I'm gonna rattle some stuff off, and you're probably gonna go, "Oh, I gotta watch that again and take notes." You might have more. So I want I want to give that to you. Because your mission is very, very important. And, and what you have in your mind and your idea and what you're trying to do is absolutely correct. I, and I want you to be able to have the huge, great impact that you were born for. So that said, you know, one of the things is we might sometimes have a trouble. We have a, sometimes we have a problem asking for support, right? Because we don't want to show up, give me money, give me money, give me money. So one of the things that we'd love to do, especially in the digital world, is, hey, here's a couple ways to support us. So this is what we're trying to do. Here's how you can participate. And one easy way, like our fan page. Okay. That's it, right? And now that's small. Then you can go to something else a little bit building, maybe volunteer or donate, right? So when you're asking for support, it's not always, you know, give me money. It's like, hey, like our fan page. Share what we're doing. That's awesome. And what that does is that triggers people to go, oh, I'm involved now. I am invested because I do like your, your, your fan page. And I, by the way, fan page, let me back this up. Sorry. Um, I'm talking about your Facebook fan page, your business page. Yeah. Okay. So that's, <laughs> or whatever social media you're, 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 you're talking. So join us here, support us by joining, by my, you know, liking us and, and, and subscribing. That's huge because now you can build the relationship you're talking about. And when you make that request, say, look, there's three ways to support us, this, this, and this, you should always get a yes, right? And if you don't, they don't resonate. So don't waste your time. And that allows you to grow into the bigger question of donate, right? And so if you've already had that relationship, you built that cold relationship to a warm relationship to a hot relationship, then you can make the big requests and let it sit there. Now, here's some other tactics, actual technology tactics that I would do. The reason why you want to like, and I'm going to go through a, a journey. This is going to be a, a journey, a customer journey. The reason why you want them to like the, fan, the, 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 the Facebook fan page, business page, is so that you can retarget them. Okay? Now you're going, what does that mean? That is talking about placing, running ads, and I'll get to that last right? Running ads on Facebook. That's what you want to do. And a lot of people go, I like to see my likes and I want them high or, and, and so on and so forth because it makes you feel good. Now, and I'm not saying from vanity. It's not that. The reason why you specifically want that is you want to be able to retarget them. And so what I love to do is get those likes and then run ads that are just about how awesome the mission is. No request. Okay. You're, it's only a brand awareness. Okay, so what you're doing is, hey, like us, love us, and what you can do within Facebook specifically, and it's a deep dive, and, and we're doing some of this training, so I'm welcome to do it. it, it it's free training, and, and uh, join, um, join. I'm sorry, worlddominatorsunite.com, worlddominatorsunite.com, happy to show you some of these techniques, but what you're going to do is when you place an ad, and it could be a video of you talking about, hey, this is my mission, 
this is what we're doing. These are some cool things. Here's some little stories, whatever that is. You can spend dollars on that and get it out to the world. And when you do that, there's data points that you can check off that are people who are highly likely to uh, support other nonprofits, people who are interested in X, Y, and Z. So now you're kind of talking, well, no, you're not kind of, you are. You're specifically targeting, targeting people that have not only habits that might give to you, but also have interest. And if you come out there with your story first, these stories of successes, you're creating brand awareness. And then as you've done that, you then can follow that up, right? So you have this brand awareness stuff. You can follow that up with the same group because they've liked your page. You now can follow through with requests for support. So support us. And then they hit that button. Just, yes, I, I want to support you. They can come to a landing page that says several ways to support us and one can be donating. So the key to that is get people to like your business page, your fan page on Facebook. Then run ads talking about how awesome the mission, the brand, but no requests. So they're just top of mind. And then the third would be, here is a, a specific request to support us. And that support is three different ways. And they might've already liked it. Who cares? It looks like they've already helped you, right? So support us, volunteer, or give us money. Yeah, that's what it's all And that's automated. <laughs> it's making it easy. What you just illustrated is how making it easy for people to add actually increases that support. Uh, folks on Facebook, uh, we got that link there, World Dominators Unite. I also put it in the Zoom chat and make cool. sure that you take time to go for that uh, to go for that training because getting out there, making it easy for people to support you uh, yeah. is really important. And, uh, and I, speak, I, I speak to things like non-ask events when you do yeah. things live, and, but it's all about building that relationship. And that's how, that's one way to do it. Uh, tell us so, more, Daniel. Yeah, I just say, here's another secret sauce. These are my little ninja chip and my little ninja tricks. Okay. So understand if you set up what I did, it's not complicated. It, it, it's, it might, some people might go, oh, I now have clarity because I've heard all these things. Others might go, I'm not sure what that is. It's not complicated. But once you understand that cycle of we're going to market our brand out there to the world, and then we're going to retarget them with asks of support, all you have to show up is, is with your story. Mm -hmm. So now that's working. All you show up is, hey, here's a small win. Here's another small win. Here's another small win. Or maybe your thoughts right? Hey, I was reflecting with, uh, you know, someone that we're helping and it meant a lot to them. So thank you. You know, that kind of stuff. And we have those small ones. Again, don't get caught in the mindset of, I have to share big wins. It's the small ones that matter. Okay. And so we're, we're usually too hard on ourselves, but here's another ninja trick. Now I know you, my friend, I know that we go to places together, right? We network in places and most nonprofits have somewhere where you're networking. Now, here's what I would do. This is real ninja stuff. Are you ready? And I, I, I do this. and It's so much fun. <laughs> and I'll tell you some insight of some things that we've done because of this. All right. So I would look for a place for you to network. Okay. Hello. Are you still there, Daniel? All right, we seem to have frozen uh, temporarily. So if you have questions, folks out on Facebook, please feel free to ask. Now, we've got Daniel back. Had a little- All right, I don't know what happened. Where'd I lose yeah, you, baby? Was... <laughs> See, yeah. it was a secret ninja trick. All right, told you it's over. You missed it. <laughs> now you got to go to World Dominators Unite and sign up to find out what that. Now this this is important. Where where did I leave? Where where did I leave you, baby? Well, we we, we I'm not exactly sure. It just kind of got stuck there. It did. Uh, but uh, you know, Facebook. Okay, so here we go. I'll 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 I'll, I'll kind of start the technique over again. So I I saw your face freeze and I wasn't sure. So you go to networking events. They meet weekly. Uh, uh, monthly or quarterly, and this, this technique really doesn't, doesn't work with the, anything more than that. So you go there, you collect business cards, then you come home and either you do this yourself, have a virtual assistant or your assistant 
take those business cards in and invite them to like your page. Now, some of them you're going to have to friend, which is cool. And by the way, what you said, Russell, right? Those who give, you give to people you know you like. So they got to be your friends. Does that make sense? There's a reason for that relationship. You ask, what you do is you invite them to like your page. Now, what you do then, imagine this, Russell, okay? You go to a networking group and let's say you met 30 people. So you might only have 30 people who like your page. That doesn't matter. Now you run ads a week before going to the event. Okay. And it's just brand awareness. Uh, hey, look at my, hey, this is a great win. We helped this family out. Thank you for the support as you're great. No requests. It's just that. Now here's what happens. All those people who like the page are now getting all these ads. Now you can spend a hundred dollars on this, right? It doesn't have to be absorbent because you're only trying to reach a handful of people, right? You're not trying to reach the masses at this point. So what happens is when you show up, the buzz that you create is tremendous. And you're gonna have people walk up to you go, man, I see you all over Facebook. I see all the great stuff you're doing. Oh, you know what? I appreciate it. that means so much. I tell you what, have you ever thought about supporting it? You want to help me? You seem excited about this. See how that works, baby? <laughs> See that? And that's how, that's how you can use social media online in an offline networking situation. And then you constantly do that. So every time you show up, you have your campaigns going and then you have these people are in there. And they just see you and they get to know you more. And what happens is their, their, their confidence in you and their love and support for your endeavor goes up and their barriers go down. And that's when you can start having real requests. And you know, a lot of people are going to come to you and go, Hey, how can I support you? And when I started speaking, here's the trick. Here's the proof of this, Russell. When I started speaking, I did this. When there's a networking group that you and I both love tremendously oh, yeah. uh, called CEO space international. And when I had the great honor to say, hey, will you come talk? I did this. And so when I showed up, everybody knew who I was. Why? Because I was targeting you. Yeah. <laughs> everybody <laughs> said, you know, you, you, you seize control. You have, you have yeah. uh, completely mastered Facebook and you went into this. This is something that Daniel started several years ago to become more effective and to find ways to use this effectively. And what a lot of agencies do, they look at everything as a cost. And so if nobody knows about what you're doing, you're not going to reach anybody. Yeah. So you have to invest on the front end more in the way of time is what you'll have to invest. But you'll have to, in order to, to stay top of mind and get out there, and I'll be talking a little bit about that with one of our sponsors, WordSpread, Bill Gilmer and his team do top of mind marketing. And we'll talk about that a little later. But it's being top of mind, getting out there. Sometimes the nonprofit doesn't have the resources. But these techniques that you just learned are something that you can start doing today. So let's look at a, a, an organization and say either one or two things has taken place. Maybe they got a little bit to invest, but the, they don't have the skills or the knowledge to do it. Or they've gone out and they've thrown some money at Facebook ads and they say, oh, you know, I've spent quite a bit. And I just don't seem to be getting any traction. So with those techniques, uh, there's a logical sequence that you follow and you, you've got loads of followers. What would be a logical sequence you would have somebody in that instance follow uh, to, to ramp that up? Yeah. So there is what I, okay. 80% of your business are, come, are going to come from existing business and people, you know, okay. and, and that's what I call warm and hot traffic sure. leads. And what a lot of people come in the mindset of is, you know, that 20% is cold. By the way, which is the most expensive? You're going to spend 80% of your dollars getting that 20%. But you can see over time how that grows a business. So there's not a silver bullet, right? So a lot of people go, I want to spend a couple hundred bucks and I want to get brand new people in. Well, <laughs> you just, I just showed you a scenario where that really doesn't work. And yeah. I'm also saying what you want to use is these tools and techniques to support your existing endeavors, mm -hmm. right? We don't want to throw everything away and start all new unless you're trying to really go big fast and you have the wherewithal to do so. But we want to support it. So by, by 
asking people first to like your page and invite them on Facebook to do so. Don't go around and give them a card and say, like my page. No one's going to do that. I'm talking about you go on it, all right, and you type it out and you invite them, right? Mm -hmm. So once you've done that, now you can spend very low dollars because you're only reaching a handful of people. So that supports your existing endeavor. Does that make sense? Perfect. That's one key. That's one key to step into there. Now, as you want to grow that up, you don't want to sit there and 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 be stuck in the computer all day. There's automated systems for this. Um, you know, if you're talking about on the on the smaller end, you have Hootsuite, you have Sprout Social, which help you with the social media stuff to get it out there properly on the platforms. Uh, you can level that up with automated marketing stuff like uh, Autopilot HQ. Dot com, which is one that I love that helps build out these customer journeys that go once someone comes in and hits my page or opts in, they get an email or a text or whatever. Let that relationship work itself. And then, you know, one of the higher ends that I actually really, really love is HubSpot, you know, where it creates and that's, you know, that's all your marketing and all your emails, um, that's your ads and, and, and all that fun stuff. So it can get, it, you can go deep real fast. But the little steps are be clear of what you are, your mission and what you're trying to do. And I'll tell you some of the stuff that I like to do is education. And I think I, I challenge nonprofits, not just to sit there and, and tell their opinion and tell why they're doing it, but also offer a little piece of education of how what they're doing can make every person better by X, Y, and Z. And, and so that's one of the things that we do. And, and, I'll, and I'll pull it right now, I'm stepping off for a second. And, and you've received this before. But, you know, like when we show up, you know, this is our world domination package, okay? And in it are these cheat sheets. And that's kind of what you were talking about. And so these things, these, these things are, you know, obviously they take time and effort to build out. But these are our handouts. And we talk about it costs money. You know, I mean, this is not inexpensive. So when I talk, everybody in my talk gets a whole packet like this of, around the subject matter, what we're doing, that they can actually implement. So creating some kind of cheat sheet, and then all you have to do is talk about those cheat sheets, those uh, white papers, those swipes, there's a lot of words for cheat sheets, the, the secret formula of how to, uh, to accomplish X, Y, and Z. Whatever that education platform, it might be a, a video series, right, to help your audience. And as you do that, a lot of people who are now recipients of, of, uh, of your nonprofit can become donors on small levels. Because they felt it, they felt effective, they felt like they, they've gotten a use out of it. Now, it's not the, the, the big deep dive to solve their problems. You're educating them to what I call symptoms, right? So, you know, if you, when this one right here, I'm just pulled up a random one. This is, uh, oh, how to create a lead generation. It's kind of like what we talked about. Build out a persona, what you want to give to them for free, and a landing page. It just tells you how to do it. Uh, worlddominatorsunite.com. I can show you some stuff there. But when you have that kind of information, you can give it out there to people. And yes, it takes time and money to do that. But when it's received, they get to know you. They, be a, they become affected in a positive way of the intellectual property, the systems, the processes, your knowledge, your, your preaching, your teaching, and they become fans. And now the next conversation is you want to support this so others can have it. And that's when you kind of give them in. And some of these people might not have a lot of money. So you can have, you know, lower level, like support Facebook or donate, or I'm sorry, so, you know, like us on our social platforms or donate 20 bucks. And if that's an automated system, it's easy. It's not hard to, to, to accomplish that. And that actually grows your fan base up with great value. Does that and make that's, sense? That's what it's all about. And, yeah. and it's a word that's not often used in those circuits, the word value. Yeah. You value to the different people you serve, how they define it depends on how they relate to you. And so those are part of the stories that you want to weave into the fabric of who you are and the difference that you're making. What is the value? And people will tell you what's valuable to them. And you you over promise, uh, you uh, over deliver, under promise on that value and, and you demonstrate that impact. Those tools there, and I, I've sat through one of the early sessions you did when you first developed that system, and it's better now than it ever was, and it's remarkable if you sit and take time to, to go through that and put a system together and find ways to give people value, and that's, that's talking about what you do and, and what's important to them. 
using a system a lot like this one. And it's perfect. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. No. World Dominators Unite. Uh, yeah. you walk you through those tools. This is where we put in the time. This is a great project. You know, if you're looking at, at attracting support, one of the best kept secrets is pro bono. And I don't think a lot of nonprofits leverage pro bono talent. And the reason that people will do pro bono work for your nonprofit varies as to whether it's a professional firm or students. But if you could find an intern and teach them this system that he just showed you, they can go in there and it would, it would give them a project of substance. Uh, it would lay out a plan that would help you reach specific types of people. You can use this system whether you're looking to find donors, whether you're looking to find board members. It'll help you gather the information and put together the things that are important because what you're doing as a nonprofit leader is something that everybody tries to do on one level or another. My friend Dana Lebo, for example, talks a lot about creating an experience for donors. How do you get them to stay with you? You have to stay connected to them. And these are the things that Daniel's talking about, staying connected to people so that they stay with you. And, uh, and some of the statistics I've seen, Daniel, are that most people are batting about maybe uh, 55, 60%. You know, they're losing upwards of 40% of their donors annually. Um, what, what are some of the ways that you think they can eliminate that using these tools and get more people? Yeah. Well, a lot of it's because they have, well, I, I think it's twofold. One, I think is kind of what you were speaking to is that they don't know where you are with the story. You know, they're not seeing the little wins, um, you, you know, and if you're not expressing that, they don't feel like they're walking the journey with you. So they're supporting you. They want to walk that journey with you. And, and so if you allow them and communicate what you're up to and you get in front of them and use technology to do so, it makes it easy, it makes your life easy. And all you do have to show up as a, the cheerleader and the ambassador that you are, right? And that's great. That helps. The other part of that is, is, you know, the reason why they fall off is sometimes we actually choose too big of a goal, mm -hmm. right? They go, wow, I just don't know how I, well, so you know how sometimes when you're looking at what you're trying to achieve and you feel maybe insignificant to be able to choose to, to attain that, mm -hmm. they do too. How's my, how's my, my, my support, my contribution, even if it's 20 bucks, how's that going to solve that? Right. They don't see it. So sometimes you're not expressing the little steps and little milestones and little goals along the way either. So they can see so that you clearly tell them what the effect of their support is actually having and accomplishing for the company. How many and that's people, how you keep them connected. Yeah. How many people do you see? And I know that some organizations are used the Facebook Live. Uh, have you come across any where you see a nonprofit doing a live where they thank a donor by name as they have money rolling in? Um, well, 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 yeah. I mean, <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna go way extreme on you, baby. All right, all right. Twitch TV. Nah, y'all. What's Twitch TV? So Twitch TV <laughs> and Faith, Facebook's getting into this too. Um, Twitch TV is a uh, is like a YouTube channel for video gamers, okay? Uh, and it, and it's and while they're branching out, it was is was solely video games. And what they did is they created Let's Plays, and that's a video game geeky word of Let's Play Along. It's Let's Plays, and so if you've ever seen a video where the video game's being played, and in the corner, kind of like. You know, me and Russ right here, we have our, our little heads right here in the corner. All right, on my screen, I'm over here and here. That's Let's Play. So you see the, 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 the person playing the video game in the corner, and then you see their video game they're playing. And what that person actually is doing, not only playing the video game, because people love to watch people play video games, they're actually 